2009 when GM decided to kill Saab. Oops, no, change to sell that. And it sold a spiker <laughs> and so forth. We were all kind of worried about how are we going to get our cars worked on? I don't want to buy a Buick. So uh, nothing wrong with Buick, but. And uh, so I had to start looking for information. I found the local club and I found the national club and I found the Facebook groups. And there's a lot of people who are all kind of milling around like, you know, hornet's nest and stirred. Oh my God, how am I going to get my Saab work done? Well, the answer turns out to be a lot easier than most people think. Saab dealers officially evaporated in the bankruptcy, but the buildings didn't vanish and the people didn't vanish. They lost money. Um, but you can get your Saab work done in most places. Well, most cities in the country, the dealers, a lot of them turned into official service centers. The big secret is the Saab parts company, Saab parts AB was always a separate company, always profitable. Saab was hardly ever profitable. The parts company always made money and it didn't go bankrupt. And it was mm -hmm. given to the Swedish government in exchange for a bad debt in the huh. bankruptcy of Saab Automobiles AB. And the Swedish government wisely decided to run it as a going concern. So they they, uh, they had to change the names. It didn't say Saab in it because they planned to sell BMW parts and so forth. It's called Oreo, O-R-I-O, not Oreo, not the cookie, Oreo AB, <laughs> like the river. And Oreo North America, you know, has people in a warehouse and they're ready to take your money. So um, Saabparts.com is their website. And they have retailers. Uh, the number one retailer in the U.S. is eSaabParts.com. They all say Saab in them. It's kind of confusing. And you can go there and look for parts. Uh, and they will, you know, take your money and ship you parts just like a real thing. So it's it's mostly a myth, mostly a myth that you can't get parts for Saabs anymore. If you have a 1969 Sonnet 2 with the curved back glass, you already know you're in trouble. You mm -hmm. know, they don't make parts for those subs anymore. Everything from 1999 onward, piece of cake. All it takes is money. And people started asking questions on Facebook. How do I find this part? And I, the answer was, well, you Google Saab and the part number. Well, how do I find the part number? Well, that's more complicated. There was this thing called the Electronic Parts Catalog, the EPC, and the WIS, the Workshop Information System, the service manual, and the dealers had access to these. So one of the benefits for us when the dealerships were repudiated in an instant was that this stuff all got loose. <laughs> Anybody can now go and download in, if you have a Windows machine, the EPC, and it's the parts catalog mm -hmm. for you know, going way back. And you could download the WIS. Um, so people were saying, how do I get my headlight bulb off? Where am I going to phone? Oh my God, where am I going to headlight bulb? And I knew the answers because I run a Windows machine on the WIS and the EPC. So I was posting hundreds, maybe thousands and thousands of screenshots from the WIS onto Facebook and answering people, how do you find parts? So I got tired of repeating myself and registered a domain. I'm a computer geek. I can do this. So um, this is uh, what you're seeing on the screen now is the WIS, the, the workshop and ratio system. Mm -hmm. You used to have to install it on Windows, which was a big enough hurdle for most people that they wouldn't do it. And I was eager to put it on the web and I kept needling Matt and Clay. We got to do wow. We got to do wow. It's WIS on the web, right? Um, and we never got around to it, never get around to it. Finally, somebody else did. So you don't even need to have a Windows machine. You, all you need is a browser. You can do it from a phone. SaabWISonline.com. Knowing that is the secret. And eSaabParts.com is the parts catalog. So you mm -hmm. can buy parts, official, genuine Saab parts from Saab. Uh, well, a Rio, but Saab, and you you have all the information the dealers ever had on how to work on them yourself if you choose to. I'm spoiled. I have two official service centers within well, when I walked within my town, three at a short range. Uh, I'm not far from Meyer Garage in Meyer, Iowa, the oldest Saab dealer in Iowa. So we're a lot of us in the Twin Cities group are big customers down at Meyer. But I um, I built a new garage and bought a lift to work on my own cars. And not just because I added up all the prices and all the parts and service I'd spent over the years on my O2, uh, mm -hmm. but it's about it was about even. <laughs> I could have done, I could have bought one more car for seven more years or built a garage. <laughs> and um, Lee's got a picture teed up somewhere of one of my cars on a lift. So you can get parts, you can get service unless you're in the middle of nowhere. Sorry. Um, <laughs> It's, it's no cheaper than it was to have somebody else work on it. But if you can work on it yourself and you don't have to be, you know, like me with a nice, warm, heated garage, people, I know people who do this on their driveways and all weather. 
uh, the information is out there. You can so also ask let me back up a second. Now, sure. Uh, I got to the the WIS, the uh, mm -hmm. Workshop Information System Online, through the Saab Club of North America website. So you can find it mm -hmm. there, or you can also say you can find it at SaabWISonline.com, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Where do you start? Well, SaabClub.com. I'm the treasurer of the National Club. That's a good place to start. We have mm -hmm. links, the resources, link to taste points after the WIS. There is now an mm -hmm. official connection between SaabClub.com and the WIS because we bought it in order to keep it going. The guy who uh, set it up in the first place, uh, we offered him space on our server to you know, help uh, reduce his cost, and he just wanted out. So we bought it from him to keep it live. It costs us nothing to run, thanks to my putting it in a corner of our existing server. Um, so it's, uh, we hope it will pay it, pay it us back as our friends there. Um, Scott Patterson, the Saab net was also instrumental in, in supporting in its early years. Yep. And, um, that's all there. So sobclub.com slash service is a good place to go for finding shops, not only the official service centers, but the Indies independents as well. Uh, we just finally dumped our entire database up there and put it on a map. Uh, so there's sobclub.com. And if you look under yep. resources, right. Service takes you to a Google map. Everybody knows how to do that. Don't believe the pin in Hawaii. She actually, I think is closed down, but still looks <laughs> as an official service center. And actually this map shows you the blue ones are official and the gray ones are Indies and the green ones will give you a discount if you're a member of the Sob Club of North America. So there you go. Fantastic. That. Yeah, awesome. That is great. So uh, your site, uh, let me get back to it again here. Mm, finding, yeah. Finding sobparts.com is um, also great because it has a lot of information about mm -hmm. part numbers. And, and that really seems to be the magic sauce, right? Is, is knowing what to buy the, and, and what part number is gonna fit on your car. So how do I figure that out? Yeah. Well, like I say, the, the EPC or now esobparts.com, if you, if you know where to look on there, there's still a bit of an art. Um, if we, let's take an example and dig through ESOB parts for a second. Uh, there, so, okay, you recognize your car. Let's uh, pick a 9.3 NG. A 9.3 NG. And here's our model. As a, okay. Uh, windshield wiper blade. Where on earth is a windshield wiper blade? Well, well it's a body part. You would think so, but yeah. I happen to know it's under electrical. <laughs> so what? this is the hurdle now <laughs> is, is familiarizing yourself with the taxonomy of where stuff got filed. Some of them are really off gotcha. the wall, little, little, little brackets that are totally unrelated pages. So stumble around in there for a while, ask people on Facebook for help, mm -hmm. uh, and you mm -hmm. will eventually get to a detailed page. So uh, let's do that. Electrical, not connector. Electrical, okay. Electrical. There's electrical. Yeah. Somebody, somebody told you look under electrical. What do you do? La down the left hand side. Yes. Wiper and washer system. Oh my gosh! Under oh. electrical, what the heck is up with and that? There's yet yeah, there's more. Um, windshield wiper chassis for what? Which one is which? Well, I have a combi. I needed the rear window, so it's the lower left. Okay. This is Down you know here. if you go to O'Reilly, they will sell you the wrong part because for whatever reason, they don't understand that five door means a combi means a wagon. But there it is. There's the wiper blade, yeah. item number four. And then in the right-hand side, you scroll down to the item. Number four, right. One of the items that has a four on it, sometimes there's more than one. And you get to decide, oh, is that for a Vigan? Is that for nine three? Da, da, da. This one's pretty unambiguous. And there, you don't need to know part number. Now you can just push the button and say, buy it, Click, it's 10 bucks. Yeah. Or if you really want to, or in other cases, you know, see where it says mm -hmm. brand, stop, and part number, 9318, 9239. And superseded part number used to be part numbers. The superseded ones are extremely important when you're looking for used parts because the, you will find them under all of the old part numbers. And so to cast a wide net, we were looking at an earlier example of a differential. There were two different part numbers. They will both work, probably. Uh, there's a reason why they supersede them. There's a reason why they're related to each other because they're compatible or forward compatible. So there's some art to it. Um, and but again, the, the the kids at the local parts store can't guarantee your accuracy either. 
So ask around in the community. Other knowledgeable SOD people will help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and of course, that's and that's one it, of the great benefits of uh, Facebook and the SOB groups on Facebook. God, so much knowledge out there. It's just, it's remarkable. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. really great. And Jim, you mentioned that uh, those part numbers, those superseded part numbers, those especially come in handy if you're trying to look at local junkyards and other yes. different areas trying to match up those parts. A lot of times these superseded part numbers are actually printed on the parts themselves, which will help you do that extra research. Yeah, a lot of I found a plastic part. Where is it? I have I have this plastic part sitting on my desk that came off of one of my cars. It's like, the heck is that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't remember that. Right? It's on the floor of my garage. Well, in broad daylight, and you have to have strong sunlight, you can see you can't see it. You take my word for it. It's molded in. There is a there's an eight digit number. Most of them are mm-hmm. eight digits under the GM era, seven or eight digits, mm-hmm. sometimes they're hyphens. And it tells the type of plastic for recycling. I literally had to get not the binocular microscope. I'm happy to say it was just the reading. <laughs> you know, I have three different levels of magnification uh, to, to mm-hmm. discriminate a six from an eight in the molded in part number. And then I hopped into ESOB. Oh, left hand. It's it's it goes on the hinge under the hood on the left hand side on an 0893. Mm-hmm. <laughs> any any 0893. So I forgot to take this with me when I put that car uh, moved that car today. Not all of them have, virtually all of them have numbers on them somewhere. So I want to go back. So if you are, if you're, you're asking the question, where do I find used sob parts? Let's go back over here to findingsobparts.com finding yeah. and, and click walk on me where through this. Right, where well, you must have skipped the sermon about part numbers, but after you've read through all that, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I, well, I started finding used parts for my sobs and I just wrote them down one after another. And these, so these are in kind of chronological order, really in order from distance from my house. Hans up in Elk River bought out um, uh, all the inventory from Andrews of Princeton when they went, uh, when he retired a few years ago. Hanover has a warehouse full of amazing old stuff. He's got like wooden steering wheels from NGs, 1950s, amazing stuff. Strandberg is a Volvo yard predominantly. They buy a lot of Saabs and they're good straight shooters. So anything with an asterisk on there, I've done business with personally and I more or less endorse them. If they can't find it, the three of them, uh, then you're in trouble. But uh, Goldwing is a big supplier nationally. They have a huge yard in New York. They ship all over the country, at least all over the world. And they go by part numbers. So if you knew the part number going in, I, I, this is the left-hand one of these for my car. Where's the right-hand one? Not everybody is that, uh, you know, particular. And I say, Adel, I'm on, ah, I can't live without this useless plastic part in a matching set. But I could type in, well, I could go to ESAB, get the other number for the right-hand mm-hmm. one, plug it into Goldwing, and 50 bucks, have it in two days. Or awesome. less if you want to work at it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm going to bounce oh, out here uh, and just for a second check some comments. Um, okay. We've got questions here. Where can I find a whole Saab 900? Well, fifty-five thousand dollars. You can have whatever uh, well, you want on eat. You know, eight or nine whole Saab uh, <laughs> right. That's a good question. Uh, Saabnet.com is a, a, a sponsor of the national convention for many years. A friend of the Saab Wiss Online. He runs a classified site. There is still such a thing. Um, and it, you know, costs a few bucks to list a saw, but that's where it's a national market. You know, if you want, I want a 1990 red SPG Italian, you know, da, 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 you're not going to find it in your town. You're not going to find it when you look in your town. It's a national market. Um, get to know the good shippers, <laughs> get to know your banker. Um, and they're out there. A lot of sobs, all hiding in garages, less and less, fewer and fewer getting dailied. But they're all still like 350,000 subs still registered in the U.S. Oh, that many. Mm-hmm. So uh, another comment here. Uh, I, Nikolai Ibramovich uh, is saying, I need CV axle drivers. Um, CV axle drivers for what year and what year and model? Exactly. Well, I don't, don't know. Don't Let's guess. Don't know Maybe he's that, a, though. I saw that come up today for 08 XWD car. Can't get rear, rear axles for the cross wheel drive car anymore. Well, mm. Facebook, honestly, uh, somebody has probably been in your predicament. Um, you're probably too late to get, well, I look at ESOB, it says no longer available, or maybe it's mm-hmm. just temporarily unavailable. You can reach out to them, send them an email saying, is this ever going to come back? Um, 
Rock Auto. I list on my used on my yep. new I've used parts. Rock. Uh, has a yep. great many. FCP Euro has a lot of good parts. FCP and Rock Auto are not what I would call full line suppliers like mm-hmm. a Rio, mm-hmm. uh, but what they have is generally good. Where they have some good stuff in there, they they are. It's not all necessarily good. So that's another common mm-hmm. question. Of, you know, which which bearing should I believe? The, this right. you know, there are two companies out there that both claim to have invented the tapered roller bearing 125 years ago. Which one should I trust? The answer is both of right. those, but maybe not some other ones. So ask around is the, is the slogan. Ask around, ask around. Um, so let's bounce back to uh, looking for all these crazy little bolts and parts and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So I grab that part number, the, the superseded or the mm-hmm. original, and mm-hmm. take that and go shopping. Um, right. And then are there places where you know you're going to get decent quality parts? How do you know what's going to come at you is going to be worthwhile? Almost all of them are decent quality. There's a couple of notoriously bad parts and and dubious reputation names as a result. But um, if you don't pay too much money, it's hard to go wrong. Fasteners, you know, go to go to your local hardware store yeah. uh, unless it's a grade eight a high strength bolt or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, auto parts stores have a great number of universal little plastic body clips and stuff uh, that will probably do if. If you're like me and it has to be exactly right, not merely functional, eh, ESOB has you covered. The, you know, mm-hmm. plastic clips, they can get easily. A container full of 9.5 NG windshields, they have to write a serious check for that. So it's right. going to be a struggle. Gotcha. But they have, I don't know, a 9.7X. If you want a new hood for your 9.7X, they all rusted clean away. Mine had a two-inch gap in the front. It was flapping in the breeze. There is like a container load of them. They're desperate <laughs> to get rid of them. Free shipping, ships you ships ground, buy two, paint one, keep one for another day. <laughs> All right. So you have this vegan uh, and have had it yeah. for some time and now it is for sale. So uh, yeah. let's talk a little bit about this car. Okay. See if we can get it Usually sold for you tonight. You'd ask me why I'm selling it. Everybody asks me why I'm selling it. I'm bored with it. I'm done fixing it. There's absolutely nothing left to fix on this car. Well, it's in the body shop for one more thing. But uh, right after that, uh, there's literally nothing left for me to do but drive it. And I had so much fun learning how to work on my own cars. Like I say, 20 mm-hmm. years ago, I never never changed my own oil. 10 years ago, I didn't change my own oil. Um, with the WIS and the EPC and ESOB parts and a Rio and my local OSC, buying parts through them. Um, I was able to replace everything that wore out or could wear out on this car and rebuilt the engine from the ground up. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, I'm about to do the air conditioning system. <laughs> so it's, uh, I have too many sobs. I'm, I've sort of moved on to the B284 now, which I prefer to drive. Oh. And then I, and I painted this one. So that's really, that's, that's the death knell for me. The $50,000 SPG, I'm glad you said it's not concourse because it would, you, you couldn't drive a concourse car. No, you don't want to, huh? I agree. Yeah. No. Well, you know, it falls off a cliff that way. So the Vigan, the paint on the front bumper of my Vigan is too nice to drive anymore. <laughs> so I can't work out and I can't drive it and it's taking up space and I don't, I own more cars than land to put them on. And so it has to go. <laughs> So we're, we're looking at this heap of parts here. What the heck is this? Everything that you've changed and it's come off? The that video? was everything I pulled off the car in one week. That was the first week. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, my Lord. Just the obvious service stuff. The car right. had been lowered, so the springs had to go back. It had black wheels on it. They had to come off. Um, I almost was too ashamed to drive it back home from New York with the black wheels on it. Um, somebody described that picture as the Saab autopsy, which I think is cute. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the beginning of... Um, what comes off the car to get replaced. I bought new headlights for it because even the glass ones get foggy after a while. And yeah. you can get them $400 from Rio, $200 from a value from another supplier. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so folks are asking, uh, how much are you asking for this big one? Well, not to put too fine a point on it, 30 grand. Uh, it's, um, but I, I point out, if you go to jxh.com slash Viggen, and you'll see my listing, um, which should be in Sobnet as well. Inflation adjusted, they sold new for a lot more than that in, in 2021 dollars. And mm-hmm. uh, like I said, I couldn't afford one when they were new. This is, yeah, it has 150 some thousand miles on the body, but virtually everything on it is new. 
Uh, well, let's see. The transmission is original, doing fine. The cross member <laughs> under the front is the original. There's a few, you know, the body shell is original in this car. But that doesn't yeah. wear out if you don't drive them in the snow. And this has never been, never seen snow. Uh, not while I own it. There's no rust. Um, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a rolling box of brand new sob parts. So you could buy a brand new Vigan today for 30% off. That's a good way to look at it. I don't know about it was 30 or 25. Go do the maths on my own website for me. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's asking here whether, uh, how much your mileage on this, on this Vigan? Uh, 100 and, uh, I want to say 156. I haven't looked at it lately. It's in, it's in the listing and it's within, you know, plus or minus 3 dB. Um, I, well, but I it's mean, got a brand new it, engine. It's, it's, it's a new yeah, car. Yeah. It is a new car, virtually new car. Well, I hope you get it sold. I hope, I hope we can help move the car for you. Um, hey, you know what? Uh, Kelly, Kelly Kanati is asking, uh, why not put it on bring a trailer? We just saw that one go for $55,000. How about yeah. that, Jim? Uh, yeah, I was good, hoping you wouldn't point. ask me that. They turned me down. They get insisted out. I have to sell it with no reserve. And I've got 32 grand into this car. Hell no. Yeah, I know what my reserve <laughs> is. I didn't tell them what my reserve. Maybe I did tell them what my reserve price would be, and they obviously decided it was unreasonable and they wouldn't worth wouldn't waste their time. They may yet come mm -hmm. calling. I don't know. I'm not in a hurry to sell it. Uh, I'm not in a hurry to walk away from fifteen yeah. or twenty grand. You know, sure. Uh, and I can I can afford to keep it until the right buyer comes along. Randy Friedley, who everybody else should also know, a sob broker. There is such a thing in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Um, is helping me sell the car and he we actually had a guy fly into albany from california during the mm -hmm. sob convention i couldn't even shake his hand test drove the car or mart uh randy drove the car <laughs> and the buyer sat in the passenger seat and and he flew home again and so i may have a buyer on the string you know they're they won't be thick on the ground but i only need one right Mm -hmm. So uh, let's wrap things up here. I want to bounce back and just kind of do a quick summary. So um, I want to make sure people understand the relationship between ESOB parts and the SOB Club of North America and okay. how when you shop there, you're kind of helping the club. So walk that through for us one more time. Well, okay. not exactly. You're helping the museum. Oh, thank there you so no much. Official, you're right, the there's, museum. There's yes. no official connection mm -hmm. between esobparts.com right. and the snobclub.com other than their esob and the museum are major sponsors of our annual convention. Go look at sobconvention.com, mm -hmm. too many domains, mm -hmm. uh, or sobclub.com and then look at the convention menu. We are having our national convention at the museum. There's a mm -hmm. sob museum in the U.S. This is new. Mm -hmm. It's in South Dakota. Right. Uh, so it's it'll be a stretch for a lot of people, but take the week. Go to Devil's Tower, go to Robin Rushmore, do all that stuff all at once. It's a beautiful place out there and a nice drive to get there and back. So we yeah, have ESAW Parts and the Saab Heritage Car Museum USA, to give it its proper name, are affiliated. And a portion of every sale of parts through ESAW Parts gets is a donation to the, the Saab Museum in the USA. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused with the Saab Museum in Trollhattan, also right. worthy of your support. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Well, I hope we got that all straight. Uh, Jim, yeah. I've enjoyed talking with you tonight. I hope your explanation of how to find those part numbers and how that can lead you on the path for that mysterious little widget that you need to satisfy your itch and get your sob back to where it needs to be. Need, exactly. I need a right hand one of these now. <laughs> very helpful. Very helpful. Yeah, my car has it. All right. Well, I'm glad I'm glad I could help. I mean, the, the web page, you know, was a, was a labor of love. My 9000 manual scanning project was kind of a labor of love. Uh, I had a pile of 9000 manuals up to here. Uh, at one point, I scanned them all in finding subparts.com slash 9000. Yeah, you can click on the link there. Mm -hmm. It'll take you straight to it. But I think um, this is going to be the I, you know, for me, uh, I mm -hmm. think guys and learning about this, uh, the information system workshop information system online is so empowering. I mean, to be able to it jump is. in here and figure out, okay, how do I do what on my 900? Mm -hmm. uh, it's great. Yeah, Especially for stuff. people who are a little too far from an official service center to uh, to realistically rely on that. Yeah, super. Man, I am so glad we connected. Thank you very much for making the time available. I hope people will drop in on uh, finding you. Give your, uh, I don't have it up on the screen, so uh, give them your, your address again so people can find you and your vegan. Uh, JXH.com believe it or not, slash vegan goes right to the listing. And you will also find, uh, but findingsobparts.com. Did I put a link on there? 
is my little, uh, you know, not repeating myself page. It's got links to all kinds of other stuff, including the Saab Club. Mm -hmm. Are you up there? Let's find. Are you here? I no, but Saab Disorder Spectrum is a good one to go out on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I'm somewhere. I I've I'm at only own Saabs, but not only ever own Saabs because I used to own a Toyota. So we figure out where you are on this mm -hmm. list. And... That's clever. <laughs> I like all that. That's great. That's super. Simple. That's hilarious. All right, buddy. I appreciate it. We uh, thank you so much for your time and sharing what you know. Well, you're going to come back again. Let's find some other excuse to bring you back and uh, talk more about uh, your experience. And definitely let us know when you when you when you uh, shift that um, big and on to a new owner. Uh, I think we want to know about that. Maybe I'll raise the price to fifty five. <laughs> that, that'll get it sold right away. <laughs> All right, buddy, absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Jim. Well, right. Mark. Um, are we done? Are we off the air? I think you are off, Jim. Okay. Again, you can't hear me again. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to make you go away. There you are now. Now you're now you're silent. Um, wow. Uh, I learned a lot there today. I love being able to go out and find those parts and absolutely. track those back. That's going to be so helpful for all of us who are trying to keep our old cars on the road. Absolutely. Uh, I know I, I probably would have, uh, I know if we had more time, we probably could answer more questions, but information was absolutely valuable um being able to actually reverse look up part numbers for parts you happen to find laying around the garage awesome. going on esop parts and plugging those in that's so valuable um also being able to look at schematics and diagrams on esop parts and trying to figure out you know where does this part go how does this fit in um you know, Jim made a comment about actually being able to look at these schematics and say, hey, I kind of got an idea how this comes apart and goes together. That helps out a lot as far as actually trying to take apart a certain area of the vehicle that you're not familiar with. Comes in super handy. So a lot of information that I really, uh, really learned a lot tonight myself, actually. So, um, yeah, it, it was an overall, overall well educational experience for sure. Absolutely. And next week, uh, we're going to be taking a look at uh, taking a look at um, lowering spring suspension modifications, uh, mm -hmm. helping explain and, and helping you understand what are all the components underneath your car? What do they do? Yeah. How do they uh, how do they perform, mm -hmm. change your performance? All of that will be coming up next week here on Solve Talk Live. Mark, I hope you have a great week. Hope you have a great day, Lee. See you next week. Take care, guys. Mm -hmm.